Hi guys, it's Ariel. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today we are in my kitchen and I thought I would do a little cooking video with you guys. I'm going to a party later this evening and I'm going to be bringing crepes and peach mojitos. These are like my favorite things to bring to parties because number one, they're so easy to make. They're fairly affordable and I don't know, but peach mojito just screams summer to me. And I thought it'd be fun to share these recipes with you guys and to show you just how easy it is to make these two items, especially crepes. Because when I was growing up in Canada and stuff, we would have pancakes and eggs and bacon for like the big weekend breakfast. And crepes always remained in my head as some fancy, complicated breakfast that French people would have. But... <laughs> I very quickly found out upon moving here that crepes are one of the easiest things to make. So yeah, I thought I would share my little quick recipe with you guys today and just have fun, a little chit chat and yeah, a more casual style video I think. Also, we have to break in my brand new KitchenAid machine. You guys haven't seen this yet because it's gonna be in an upcoming apartment renovation video. But yeah, I just got this, um, <laughs> <laughs> my dream KitchenAid mixer. So yeah, we'll break it in today. We'll start off by making the crepes and you only need five ingredients for this one. You need milk, flour, eggs, butter, and a little bit of sugar. So we'll start with our eggs and our flour. And also I use a scale. All of my cooking I do in grams and milliliters. It's a lot more precise. And when you're using a scale, you dirty a lot less utensils. Like you don't have the measuring cups and the measuring bowls that are dirty after. You can literally just place your bowl on the scale and get all your ingredients. So that is what I'm using today. Flour. Okay, so you're gonna start off with 200 grams of flour and 200 mils of milk. Now the recipe actually calls for 400 mils of milk, but we're gonna mix equal parts liquid and flour together, and we do that to get rid of all the little clumps that you create when you mix flour with liquid. I have tried this by mixing like the full 400 mils with 200 grams of flour, and yeah, it just does create a lot of clumps, so I have found that this strategy works for me. And while that's mixing, we'll just measure out the remaining 200 mils of milk. Okay, once the flour and that first amount of milk is mixed into a little liquidy paste, we're gonna add in the remaining 200 mils of milk and we're also going to add in two eggs. One of my friend's uncles who's a pastry chef always told me never crack your eggs over the bowl. You should always crack them over, you know, a, a secondary bowl and then pour them in just so you don't get eggshell. But I'm not too bothered by eggshells in my crates. So we will start mixing it up. Ooh. Next, we're going to measure out 35 to 40 grams of unsalted butter. And then I'm gonna heat it over the stove before I add it in. 39 grams, we love it. And yeah, I'm just gonna heat this over the stove. While the butter's melting, I'm just gonna add in a spoon of sugar. I don't have a big spoon, so it's gonna be two small spoons, two teaspoons. One of our first moved to France and I started going to house parties or inviting French people to house parties, I was always so impressed by what people would bring to the parties. I remember my very first party that I hosted all the way back in Grenoble. I had three French boys invited and uh, it was some sort of like Christmas potluck. So people brought drinks and snacks and food and stuff. 
and all of the North Americans brought like chips, cookies, Coke, you know, basic stuff that you could just pick up at a grocery store and not cook and bring that's pre-made. And these French boys showed up with salad, like washed lettuce, a homemade vinaigrette, and snails. And I was so impressed by this. I was like, whoa, you just surpassed all my expectations for men. <laughs> men who come to parties. Like I just, I was, I was really impressed. And so since then, I am always like, you have to go the extra mile for any French party you go to. I can't just show up with chips. Okay, so the butter's melted. We're just gonna throw it in. It's okay to leave a little butter in the pan and not scoop it all up because it just means the first crepe will be extra buttery. Okay, so we're gonna get to cooking these crepes now and normally, like for breakfast or something, I would just cook them plain. But these ones I'm gonna cook with butter and sugar. I'll show you how it looks in the pan because it's gonna kind of caramelize and just turn into really, really delicious and a little bit sweet crepes. This is Jean's favorite way to eat crepes. And I figure if you're going to a party, I don't wanna bring crepes and like jam and whipped cream and fruits. I would rather just pre-make these little butter sugar crepes and have them as a finger food that people can just take and enjoy. So yeah, let me show you. Okay, so this is what our batter is looking like. I'm just gonna use a ladle and fill it three quarters and pour that into the pan. Crepes do cook pretty fast and you know what's starting to flip when the edges sort of start to peel off of the side of the pan. Okay, so while the other side is cooking, we're gonna be speedy. We're gonna add in a little slice of butter to one quarter of the crepe and sprinkle brown sugar on top of that. Now we're just gonna fold everything over into that one little quarter. So yeah, here is what the final little quarter looks like. Hopefully I can make 10 of these and I'll put them in a little Tupperware container and yeah, people can just take them as finger food. saw the recent video that I put out with my sister and Jaw, which was called Who Knows Me Better? They answered like 20 questions about me to see who knew me better. But in one of them, I mentioned that one of my dreams is to open a crepe shop. And I just would love, I think, one day to go back home to Toronto and open a little cafe with Jean and bring a really great part of French culture back with me and share with everyone. I've always wanted to own my little cafe. I originally thought maybe in France I would open sort of like a Canadian themed log cabin cafe. Um, but who knows where this world will take me if I go back home to Canada or stay in Paris forever. But, but yeah, just a future plan I hope for myself. <laughs> One of the reasons that I thought I would open a coffee shop here in France uh, is number one, I felt like there was a huge lack in the market of North American style coffee. It's very hard to find dripped coffee in this country. Mostly it's like cappuccinos and lattes and espresso shots for sure. And then I also wanted to make it very eco-friendly. A lot of coffee shops and stuff, even if you're staying and sitting in the coffee shop, they will give you your coffee or your cappuccino in a disposable cup. So I always thought it'd be nice to make a cozier cafe with nice mugs and just very eco-friendly, zero waste as possible. 
But yeah, I remember when I was studying, especially in Grenoble, there was just no coffee shop that sold the large coffee that I was looking for with also a place that you could bring your laptop and study. So that was initially my coffee shop dream for France. So far we have four done. I have one here and one here. I don't know if we'll get to 10, but I am hoping we'll get to eight. Okay, so we have eight crepes done and I'm making the last one, the ninth one, which I'll set aside for Jean to sample when he gets home before we go to the party. But yeah, I'm just gonna finish up this one and then we'll start on the mojito. Okay, so we're gonna start with mojitos. I just ran out to grab a handful of fresh mint from our balcony. These are the only clear bowls I have so you guys can see what I'm doing. Normally I have this like big stainless steel bowl, but that wouldn't be very fun because you couldn't see all the ingredients I'm adding, but... So we're gonna start with these two bowls to mix everything into. I'm gonna grab my rum, my sparkling water, my peach syrup, and a little simple syrup that I already made. I make my own simple syrup, it's so easy. It's one part sugar, one part water, you just heat it up until the sugar disintegrates, so easy. Um, but yeah, I have some of that left over in the fridge, so yeah, I'm gonna grab those ingredients and we'll start. Oof. Okay, I'm just gonna start by emptying my sparkling water into the bowls. I'm sure you're supposed to use club soda, but to be honest, that's three times the price of sparkling water, so... We don't have the production budget for that. Okay, so I don't have any measurements for this recipe. I kind of just go by feeling and taste. I know that we're gonna be a pretty big group tonight, so I definitely wanna put at least three quarters of the bottle between these two bowls. And if it's too strong, that can always compensate with the sugary peach syrup, the mint, and the simple syrup. So yeah, we're gonna go by feeling here. Oh my God. It smells so strong. I don't like that. Ugh. I've never used this brand before, Old Nick, but it was like the only rum I could find at the grocery store. Uh, and it's strong. It is strong. I'm just gonna add in some peach syrup. These you can find in any French grocery store. They have them in almost every flavor. Strawberry, raspberry, lime, grenadine, peach. I figured peach is probably the most popular flavor and I'll add a bit of my simple syrup although the peach syrup is definitely a little bit sugary uh, the simple syrup is brown because I made it with brown sugar <laughs> and I'm just gonna wash my mint and sort of muddle it up and then we'll put it in here I don't really have anything to muddle this with so I'm just gonna use the back of this lemon juicer but i remember when we were buying these mint plants the plant store guy was just like be careful while you plant the mint it will spread all over the place and i'm like sir i want it to spread everywhere on my balcony vive mojitos all summer long mm. now it's starting to smell much better Okay, I'm scared. Let's taste this. I'm scared because it smells so strongly of rum. Not bad. That is not bad. That actually tastes really yummy. My only complaint is that it's room temperature. I could really use some ice cubes in here, but I'm gonna bring those with me to the party. But yeah, these actually taste really good. I can't believe there's almost an entire bottle of rum in here. That's insane. I think I'm gonna package it up in this giant Tupperware container. I thought I would maybe be able to get it back into these bottles, but I don't think so. I don't wanna risk it. Okay, mojitos done. And I'm also gonna throw the crepes in another one. And voila, there we have it. Everything I'm bringing to the party tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long and boring, but 
yeah, maybe you learned a new recipe that you also thought was too hard to make before. Let me know if there's any other French recipes that you guys want Jean or I to cook with you. I have tons of French recipes up my sleeve, so it could be fun to share if you guys are interested in that. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys in my next one.